So I've alluded to this several times, the concept of uh, basis risk. So now we're going to actually figure out what this is. It is the risk that comes from several things. Number one, using a proxy futures for an asset. What this means is that the asset that you want to hedge doesn't have a futures contract. So you use a futures contract with an underlying asset that is close to the asset you want to hedge. For example, a common one is to use heating oil, which has the contract ticker HO, to hedge jet fuel. Airlines use this because the correlation between heating oil and jet fuel is close enough that you can use it as a proxy. This is referred to as cross-hedging, and we will talk about cross-hedging in this chapter. So, kind of a preview. Number two, the, the asset purchase or sale, depending whether you own the asset or you want the asset, the sale or purchase date is not the same as the contract expiration date. So that, remember, convergence on the last day of trading for that futures contract, the spot and the futures price will converge. But if you have to close your futures contract out before the expiration date, well then they won't converge, which means you'll have that gap between the two prices. That's called basis risk. I pointed that out before. So they may not uh, uh, be exact, or it could be the case that you have uncertain dates. So you may say, a company may say, we're expecting to purchase uh, a certain commodity in either November or December. We're not entirely sure. That clarity will only show up sometime in September, and it happens to be July now. And you're working on a big project, and you're not sure, based on the project timelines and the flex that you built into the project, whether you'll have slack enough to use it in November or December. So that sets up basis risk because of uncertainty or this gap between the date you need it and the date the contract you use expires. Finally, the risk of delivery or expiration overlap. So that looks like this. Let's say that expiration is over here, but that the delivery period starts up here. Well, you run the risk of delivery when the expiration date overlaps with delivery. So maybe you'll use a different futures contract where the expiration date occurs before the delivery date. Well, you still have some unhedged portion of time. So there's this overlap that can also create basis risk. So now that we have a picture of where basis risk can come from, and we can see clearly that unless the futures contract, the asset of the futures contract is the same as the asset you're using, and unless you close your hedge on the very day that you take delivery, which just happens to be the contract expiration date, you're going to have basis risk. So it's not something that, oh, maybe I'll have basis risk. You're going to have basis risk. So you got to learn how to deal with it. So the basis, what basis risk is, the basis itself is the, is the dollar price of the asset, the spot price of the asset, the spot price of the asset to be hedged minus the futures price of the contract used. Now notice that these can be different things. So if we take this example up here, heating oil and jet fuel, the spot price of the asset to be hedged would be the spot price of jet fuel versus the futures contract, the price of the futures contract used, the price of heating oil. So they don't have to be the same thing. However, we can state something here. If the asset underlying the spot contract, S sub A, is the same as the asset underlying the futures contract, the basis will equal zero at expiration. That's the one thing we can state. So that's a certainty. So if the asset that you're hedging is the same as the asset underlying the futures contract, the closer you close out your contract to expiration, the lower your basis risk is. And if you can do it on the date of expiration, your basis risk should be zero at expiration. However, However, even if the assets under the spot, uh, the spot asset and the futures asset are the same, 
are the same, it is very rare that they'll move in lockstep motion. In other words, the price change in the spot market of asset A divided by the price change of the futures contract with A underlying it may not equal one. So that if the spot price goes up 2%, the futures contract might not follow suit or it might go up 4%. It might not track perfectly. You've got tracking error in here. What we're saying here in this case is that the correlation even between the same asset, the spot versus the futures, may be less than one. So that you might have a situation where you have a basis that you expect to decrease over time but actually increases over time because the futures price is for some reason failing to track the spot price. So here are the two examples we used before, the spot price over the futures price. And here in this chart, it's the futures price over the spot price. If the spot price is above the futures price, we have a positive basis. Why? Because the basis is the spot price of the asset minus the futures contract abuse. So spot minus futures, as we can see, this will be greater than zero. It's a positive basis. But here, the futures price is over the spot price. So the spot price minus the futures price will end up with something less than zero. That's a negative basis. So again, uh, just to show you what can happen to the basis, remember our spot price minus our futures price is the basis. In other words, that's the spread. The spread between the two curves we refer to as the basis. The basis can increase over time or can decrease over time. Here we're showing them both decreasing over time. But there can be some sections in here where while it's decreasing, it may increase over time. As time passes, it may begin to increase again. So if the basis is increasing over time, it's referred to as a strengthening of the basis. That's not a good thing. For any hedge, that's not a good thing. If it's decreasing over time, it's called a weakening of the basis. That's not a good thing. Here's why. If the basis is the source of risk, basis risk, we want that risk to decrease over time. We want a weakening of the very thing that is the source of risk, which means a weakening of the basis is a weakening of the source of risk. That's a good thing. So sometimes things are like uh, uh, baseball, where the higher the score, the better. And sometimes uh, things are like golf, where the lower the score, the better. When we're talking about the basis, we want a golf score. We want the lowest we can, a weakening of the basis. Well, that's a good thing. A strengthening of the basis. That's always a bad thing, no matter how we look at it. That's basis risk in a nutshell. Let's go into it a little bit deeper, shall we? So let's put some detail behind basis risk. And let's look at uh, uh, two scenarios. One in which uh, we're going to, uh, we have to sell a particular asset in the spot market at some future period and one in which we'll buy in the spot market at some future period. So here's our list of variables that we're going to need to mathematically define basis risk. Uh, time T1, time T2, we'll let the spot price be S1 and S2. We'll let the futures price be F1, F2 and the basis be B1 and B2. So at time T1 our hedge is open, at time T2 our hedge is closed. The value of our variables at those particular times, at T1, our spot price is $2.50. The futures price is $2.20. And the basis at this point is $2.50 minus $2.20 or $0.30. Cents. Now, let's clarify something here because I don't want you to breeze over this very quickly. When we say the futures price is $2.20, the futures price at time T1 is $2.20, but it's the futures price for time T2. It's a contract for this period of time that currently happens to have this price. So if this is January and this is July, this will be a July or very close to a July contract. So in other words, it's not a, a futures contract with an expiration of T1. It's the price of a future contract, a July price, a July delivery date, with a January date on that contract. That can be somewhat misleading and confusing for some students when they look at the futures price now and the futures price uh, then. They may be thinking that it's two separate things. It's not. This is the current price at T1 
for a July, I just used July as an example now, for a July futures contract, a futures contract with a month close to T2, based on where it expires, the whatever choice we made, that's what that is, but the F1 is the price of it today. Okay, so we got that. So we can see that our basis is 250 minus 220 is 30 cents. In July, when we close our hedge, let's say we're carrying on with the January-July example, at time T2 we close it, the spot price is now $2. So if we're a buyer, that's good. If we're a seller, that's bad. The futures price has settled at $1.90. So our basis is now only $0.10. Cents. Notice it hasn't converged. It hasn't completely disappeared. There's still some basis left over. So let's see how we deal with this. Let's say that we were going to sell our asset at S2. If we were going to sell our asset, we're very concerned about a drop in price. We can hit the price here today is 250. It, we don't know what it's going to be at T2, but we see 250. We want to be fairly certain that we're going to lock in a price. The future is already down at 220. So what we want to do is protect ourselves from any more downside because we want to sell for the highest price. So we will short at F1. So what do we get? What happens? Well, at S2, we'll sell it for $2. Plus, we will have the gain on the contract, which is F1 minus F2, which is the futures price when we opened minus what it settles at. It just so happens that it went down as well, so we have a 30 cent gain. It could have gone up, and this would have been negative. So we would have had a negative price here. So 2 plus a negative would have been a subtraction, right? Just so happens this is positive. So this equals $2.30. $2.30, that's made up of two components. It's made up of two components. It's made up of F1. This will always be the case, by the way. It's made up of F1 plus B2, the basis. So the basis is positive, so it actually helped us a bit. If the basis were negative, it would have hurt us a bit. So in other words, we locked in a price of 220, but because of the basis, we actually realized 230. So that's a case, again, where it helps us. Let's look at the same scenario, but we're going to buy. We want to buy the asset at S2, and we're going to be long at F1. So what are we going to pay for our asset? Well, we're going to pay $2. That's a good thing. We're going to pay $2. And we're going to realize the gain on the futures contract, which is F1 minus F2. Well, that's $0.30. Cents. Now, why are we adding $0.30? Cents? Well, because we were long the contract. We were long. So it doesn't reduce our price because it went down. It actually increased our price. So we're going to pay 2 plus whatever we lost on the contract, which happens to be $0.30. Cents. So we're going to pay $2.30. Notice that no matter which one we do, we've locked in the gain. This $2.30, again, is made up of the futures price plus the basis. Now, we locked in a price at $2.20, but we ended up paying $2.30 because of basis risk. We didn't actually hedge out everything. So what we've done is we've locked in, in both scenarios, we've locked in our price at T1 with the futures contract. We lock in our price at T1. We're going to pay 220, but we are still open to basis risk. So we are hedging away that undesired price risk in the asset by entering into the hedge. But even though we eliminate one risk, we open up another risk, which is basis risk. So we've traded off this one risk. Now we have to deal with basis risk, which is a different thing altogether. And I'll show you how that works out uh, shortly, that there are two components to basis risk. But let's fill in our little uh, our, our grid here. So if we have a short hedge and the basis increase, we do better. Now, I'm going to show you how all you need to know is that answer and you can fill in everything else. That's all you need to know is that answer, and everything else gets filled in because everything is asymmetrical in the futures and options market. Every payoff is asymmetrical. On a short hedge, if a strengthening of the basis is better, a weakening must be worse. On a long hedge, if a short hedge, if the basis increases, 
increases, and the short hedge does better, the long hedge must do worse. And if the long hedge does worse with an increasing of the basis, it must do better with a decreasing of the basis. So when you get to pay off things, all you really have to do is know one, like we just know one of the cells. From one of the cells, I know that the opposite cell has to be opposite, and the opposite cell on, on going down has to be opposite as well. And then, of course, I can fill that in. So the conditions are the same on the horizontal of each side, but yeah, you see, it's nice and simple, right?